Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Facebook Live with me, Sam. Um, and then my co-stars will be the lovely cats here, as you see. Um, we have a cat wall in our house, and the cats just hang around up there. And so, yeah, can be fun, can be entertaining, especially when you drop a little bit of catnip up there. So I'm um, going to wait just a couple of minutes here, let people know that, or give people time to... Uh, join us. Got a couple of people watching already, it looks like. Let's see. I don't know how to go. Hey, don't you know how to tell who's watching the lives? Right, Hi, people. We don't know how to go. We don't know what we're doing. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who's watching here. I see there's a few people watching. If you are, um, just leave a comment and I'm sure I'll be able to see it then. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so we're going to get started here in just a minute. So I hope everybody's enjoying their quarantine on this lovely rainy day. Um, not that being stuck in your house or staying home is bad enough, but um, yeah, when it's raining and you can't go outside, then that just makes it even worse. So hopefully we just kind of break up your day a little bit. If the kids aren't taking a nap, they can watch and have a little bit of entertainment while they're home. Um, I only wish that maybe some of the kids had balloons that they could practice with at home, but um, once we're all done with this, should the kids have an interest in it, well, you know where to get them. <laughs> we have balloons. So um, what we're going to do today um, is we're going to just make a few different things. I have a, just a short list here of a couple things. We'll have a, a dog, a cat, a penguin, a turtle, and then a monkey in a tree, and Depending on how long we go for, maybe I'll make something else cool at the end. Um, but don't want to take make them too long, you know, just short amount of time there. So, um, hi April, I see you're you're watching. Hope everybody's um, doing well at your house there. Um, yeah. So, real quick, kind of go through some of the things I use. Have my Legenda here, which is my automatic pump. It's been a been a blessing. I got that last year, uh, midsummer or so. Prior to that, I used just a little hand pump here. And I used the hand pump um, for nine years as I was doing this. And it was tough to switch to the automatic pump because the hand pump became part of who I was and just how I interacted with kids. You know, blow the balloon up all funky and toss it and, you know, just kind of make the kids laugh if it, you know, flew out of my bag or flew on the ground or whatever. So. When I switched over to the automatic pump, it was really, really a bit of a change and it took some getting used to. So um, one of the other things I have, I get asked a lot when I'm out twisting, kids will ask, what is that around your neck? Um, and this is actually just a balloon cutter. Um, so I, it's got a blade in there. And when I'm twisting, I can break balloons off while they're inflated. Um, I'll show you guys that as we move along here, but uh, uninflated balloons tend to be a little harder to break. And sometimes if you can break them, it's like snapping your finger with a rubber band. So it's easier just to kind of quick break it like that and it's done and out of the way. So, um, yeah, so I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, and I'll just kind of ramble on, talk through things as I'm doing it. So my, I told you that I was going to make a few different items there. And uh, what I'll probably do is maybe make a few different variations of those items on there as well. So, um, hello, Selena. Thank you for watching. Um, and yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started. So, the, uh, the first one we'll do today is a dog. And just to kind of give you guys a quick rundown how, you know, when we do balloons. Um, again, this is it's an entertainer balloon. It's called a 260 um, in our balloon world. Um, but I use a brand called Qualtex. So they are a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier uh, for twisting balloons, and they can take the stress a little bit more. Um, so when I blow up a balloon, depending on what I'm making, I don't always blow it up all the way. You can see this one's only blown up about halfway. And I think when, when kids and adults uh, get started twisting, one of the biggest mistakes they make is they blow it up all the way, and then when they get to the end, there's nowhere for the air to go. But so you see, we'll start with the tail. You know, it's probably about six fingers or so, like about halfway. Um, and you'll find my hand, I use it to measure everything as we go. And that's how we get 
Uh, that's how we get uniform and make sure everything looks the same. So um, I'm sure everybody knows what a simple balloon dog looks like. Um, and I'll show you real quick. It's basically we just twist it like that and you hold it. Otherwise it will come undone. So some people will twist it and they're like, oh look, I did it. And it stays like that. Then you let go and it comes undone. So twist it. Take the balloon and twist it in half like that. And right here, take it and just twist it together. That gets you your little balloon dog face. The neck, typically, like I said, I use my hand to measure everything, so there's two fingers. And I try to make sure that the ears and legs and everything are the same size, so I bend it over so that it's roughly roughly the same size as the ear. The body, usually do like four fingers in the hand. Twist it back over. And then there is our simple little balloon dog with his tail. So one of the one of the fun things that we can do with the tail if you have enough balloon left, if you take the end of that tail and you stretch it out like this, just give it a little stretch. It's fun to do with the kids. Take it and you just tell them it's a little bit of magic. Just blow on that tip a little bit. And it pops the end of that tail up like that. So it makes it look like he's got a little poof ball at the end of the tail. So that's one one type of balloon dog. We'll make, we'll make a couple of them here. Sometimes you can stretch it, pull it so it's nice and soft too. Doesn't have a lot of pressure. Um, I did the same on this one. Left only inflated it about halfway. You know, you can see it's about six fingers again on there. But so for this one, what we'll do? Let's see. This one. It's real simple. We just looped everything over. So it's all just loops and then tied off. This one, we'll just make it a little more detailed by adding a couple of twists to the ears and the legs. So you have your mouth again there. And instead of just twisting it over like this, what we'll do is we'll actually make another twist there. So you end up with a link like this um, sometimes in the balloon world, we refer to this as a sausage twist. And then you bring that back down this way and twist it over. So now it looks like he has two ears. And then we'll do the same actually for both legs. Neck, make it about that size there. And for the leg, I kind of squeeze a little bit when I'm twisting. I don't know if you can see how the balloon's distorted there just a little bit. That's where it was inflated originally, and then as you squeeze it, it goes, it inflates the rest of the room. But do about a two finger bubble for the neck there. And the same thing for the leg, like we did the ears. We do one little twist there, bring this back around. Do another little twist like so. The body, again. Then do another leg, like that. And then you end up with a dog that most people have seen um, has the two little legs and then the ears. So what you'll notice too is that even though both balloons were blow, uh, inflated, both, this one had quite a bit more tail left. This one did not because we put more twists in it. We ended up with not as much balloon. So what you can do there is you can leave it and just tell the kid the dog has a really long tail. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually just break it off and give him like a little stub tail. And I mentioned the breaking of balloons when they're inflated versus uninflated. Uninflated, I'll just use my cutter, snip it off. When it's inflated, what I'll actually do is think about the piece that I want to save, and then I'll put a twist there, because that's how long I want the tail to be. But then what I'll do is I'll come up about halfway on this balloon, and you just twist it. I use my thumb, kind of like you're ripping duct tape, just pop it right off. Then you're left with that little piece there. And there's your dog. Just another little fun variation. Uh, the third dog we'll do, and then we'll switch and we'll do a cat. Uh, but the third dog we'll do here, let's pick random colors. Take it a step further with the detail. Most of the 
the dogs will start off the same. You can do other things with the face as far as how you start them off. But for this example, um, I'll show you just, we'll use the same basic face type. And then later on, if we do some more advanced videos, um, I'll show you how we add a different face on it. But, so we twist it kind of like we did that second one there where we have the ear, but we're gonna actually add a bubble at the top, a small bubble just like that. So we'll end up with one, two big bubbles, a small bubble, and then we will bring that over and we will meet it with that. So whereas the last balloon basically just looked like this, this one we have that extra bubble on the top. Then we'll go ahead and we'll finish that off like we normally would, at the legs. Bless you. Bless you. Sorry. So. so we end up with a dog that looks very, very similar to the other dogs that we've done. Only we have this bubble at the top. And with this bubble at the top, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add ears. So you take that, and this is called a pinch twist. And basically what we do is you have that one bubble there, you pinch that bubble, and we're gonna pull this bubble this way. You take these two fingers right here where the ears are and you kind of squeeze them down just a little bit. You pinch that bubble, and as we're pulling it, keep that tension there, we actually twist it a couple of times and you end up with something like that. So and it's referred to again, as I said, a pinch twist or an ear twist. Um, if you're making some other different animals, um, we'll show you on a cat when we do that. But. So that is an ear or a pinch twist. Or. And then I like to just take a different color. Doesn't really matter what color, but I make it two different colors. One, so you can really see the difference between the two. And two, because the more balloons you pull out of your bag, kids just think it's the coolest thing. So this one, we'll make the ears about six fingers. So we'll put a twist there. Then what we'll do is we'll actually take this and we're gonna twist this right around that pinch twist there. We'll make our ears about the same length right here. And just like we did on that tail earlier, we're just gonna take this piece off just let the air out of it, then we'll tie that off. Now you could leave it like that and say the dog's got some just really strange ears. Um, but I don't. Typically what I'll do is I'll actually use this face a little bit different from the face to the side like that. This bubble on top then, you take it and you twist it so it's in line with the eyes. What that will allow us to do is that will allow us to take the ears and bend them just a little bit. And if these are soft enough, sometimes they're really tight, but these ones are not, what we can do is we could take and we just kind of pinch right there in the corner, just a little bit. And it gives the ears just a little bit of shape, like so. Then you end up with a dog with some little ears like that. Um, sometimes I'll use the extra white piece, I'll actually attach it for the tail so the tail and the ears are the same color. But there's that. Then, one of the other things I notice with kids is sometimes they see the balloon and they just don't always see the face. Now, I'm going to put some eyes and a little smile on here, but what I will tell you is that my wife is the face painter. I have the artistic ability of a six year old. So, we will just, <laughs> just draw some circles here for the eyes. So that kids can really tell where where the face is supposed to be because this face is actually in a different spot than the other ones Put a little smile add a couple of little dots here for the face and then the nose so you end up with a little dog with a smiley face like that typically when you'll see a regular balloon dog like this you would just put the eyes here and here and then a smile like that so you just have the eyes there, and then these are actually the ears. So when I do the dog like this, it's important to have the show where the eyes are going to go, because otherwise kids don't understand why this is here and the ears. So. so that was a couple of different variations on the balloon dog. Um, most of the animals that I make, I can do, you know, a few different variations like that. Where I find that that's really important is if I'm doing a birthday party, for example. If there's 10 kids there, they'll get a really cool balloon. If I go to a birthday party and there's 30 kids there, 
they're going to get the simple dog versus the the more advanced dog. So it's important to know the different variations between the balloons that you can do because kids want a balloon dog. Great. You know, everybody likes balloon dogs, but the le you know, the, the more time you have to do it, the better you can improve the sculpture for the for the kid or the guests or whoever's at the, you know, whatever kind of event you're doing. So um, next we'll do a cat. Uh, there are, uh, let's see, a couple different variations of the cat as well. I'll do the same thing. I'll do three. Um, the first one is, I want you to go pig. The first one is um, the very first cat I learned how to do. For this, we inflate the balloon just about the same size. Leave a little bit less than half. Now, with a lot of these, the more bubbles you have, it's very important to be able to maneuver your hand because sometimes you have to hold a lot of bubbles in your hand. This is going to be one of those examples where we have to be able to hold a lot of bubbles. For the face, I start off with about a two finger bubble, like that. Then we're going to do another bubble the same size. So we'll end up with two bubbles that are essentially the same size there. Um, the way I learned to do this was we do another bubble, okay? So there's three bubbles the same size. Now, here is where things get tricky because in order to do the cat's uh, face and the ears, um, we are going to have to add five more bubbles before we even twist anything together. So what I do is I take my pinky and I will hold this one in between the pinky. I take one bubble, a little bit longer that way, take a small bubble, make one bubble, this next one here, it's hard to visualize where it's gonna be. This is an ear. This bubble here is gonna actually gonna be the forehead of the cat. So I would make it a little bit bigger than I do the cat's ear. And then I make another small bubble because I want the ears to be the same size. And this last bubble here is actually going to be the other cheek. So we want that to be about the same size. You can see there, they're just about the same size. Now, here, now that we have all those bubbles twisted, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bubbles twisted. We'll take this bubble and this bubble and we meet them together in the middle. All the while we're still holding on to that bubble down here because the next step we're going to do is we're going to take that bubble and we're actually going to push this bubble through the face like that so it looks like this so those two bubbles on the back are basically just to hold the face up like that the pinch twist that i referred to earlier we're going to do two of them one is here the other one is here so we take this same thing kind of squeeze those together just a little bit to take some of that tension off and we grab this and we twist it. Then I will do the same with the other ear. We end up with like this. Now this is the first cat I learned how to make. It's You can use this same face for a bear um, and diff other different animals. Um, but this was the first cat I learned how to make. And basically just like the, the way the ears are there, you know, gives you a little, little uh, tip there. From there, simply just go. Sometimes I'll put a neck there, sometimes I won't put a neck. All depends on how much balloon you have left. The cat does take quite a bit. So whereas we had this much extra balloon left, you can see there's not much left there. So we'll take and we finish off the cat just like that. Sometimes if we put only two bubbles in the back here, or just one bubble instead of the two, his head will stand up a little bit straighter. That's probably what I should have done in this case, but I didn't think about that ahead of time. So we have this cat who's just going to be looking down. But you get the general idea. The cat there. And then just throw some big eyes on there. Oh, and my marker slipped, so one of his eyes is really good. <laughs> so there's just a simple cat face um, and we'll do next we'll show you a, a variation on one we're going to use the same head but we're going to make the face just a little bit different Anthony wants to see one of my cats pop the balloons you, I don't know that you'll be able to see them too much you can probably hear them um, 
They, uh, they don't often play with the balloons too much. Um, they'll play with the long ones that are uninflated, or if I inflate them just a little bit with a little tail. They'll play with them that way. Sometimes you can make, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent here. Take a little balloon, just twist it like this. Kind of makes like a little mouse thing. Put it in your hand, like this. As I look like a carrier. Cats will chase after it sometimes like that. We'll leave it there. Maybe you'll hear a cat pop it as we go on. <laughs> All right, back to the cats. What are going to use? Goldenrod color, as we call it here. So I try to squeeze it after I tie it. Make sure it's a little bit soft. And again, we use, you know, we leave a um, little, little less than half uninflated. So same thing about six fingers. Okay, so for this cat, what we'll do is we're actually going to take this, start off the same with three little bubbles, like this. Only this time, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this first bubble, and we're going to tie it right below that third bubble there. So twist it, so you get something that looks like this. Almost looks like a small balloon dog. This nozzle here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take that nozzle and we're going to see if we can show you. I'm going to pull the nozzle over this here and then tuck it under in between those two balloons, just like that. You can either leave it on the outside or if you want to tuck it back through again, just like that. So you end up with what kind of looks like a little bit of a muzzle. And then, just like we did before, we have five bubbles. Just those together. Now, the difference between this one and the first one we did is we're not actually going to pull the face through here like we did last time. Instead, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to twist these into ears. And you end up with what looks like a cat's face, or I'll use this for a lion, tiger, anything like that. Put a little net, and then we just finish it off with the legs, just like we did before. Like that. So as you can see from doing a couple of dogs and then a couple of cats already, the same basic body structure can be adapted to pretty much anything. The difference really is going to be the face and what you make the head look like. That's where kids really see the difference. You know, they don't really notice that the body's the same, same exact as a dog, um, but they, they're looking at the face. Okay, so the last cat we'll do is going to be just a little bit more complicated than the third dog that we did. But it's, again, it's to show you that there's different variations of animals that you can do. Um, it's going to be one where we make the ears a different color, just like we did the dog. And I'll use two different colors on this one as well. We'll use um, the same color, just different shades. So we'll use a couple of purple. I have a, a lilac and then just a dark, regular purple here. So. For the, the head and body, we're going to blow this up, inflate it. Just about the same. So you'll notice most of the, you know, there's not very many things that I make that I inflate the entire balloon. Um, because the more you twist, the more balloon it's gonna require at the end to stretch. Um, so how we're gonna start this off is we're gonna start this the same way we did the second cat that we just made, which is we'll make three bubbles like this. Just that so we get that little small balloon dog face looking thing. Take that nozzle, pull it through, just kind of stretch it there so you end up with the muzzle. Now instead of doing the, the cheeks and the ears going around like that, what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to make a loop here and then I'm going to make another loop here and we'll do that. I twist just a little bit and I pull it through. Usually once or twice will be fine, but you'll end up with this. 
looking shape here. And then I'm going to bake four bubbles out of this top one. So we have enough balloon left. The bubbles we'll make are going to be about three fingers. So just about there. One. Instead of making a chain of bubbles, I'm going to bring this back down. And I want this bubble, this next bubble, to be about the same size as this one. So I kind of just squeeze it in there. And I will twist it, try to see so you guys see it there. Twist it, and then we just pull it through once and pull it back up. So you end up with something that kind of looks, I guess maybe like a rabbit if you wanted to. Okay, but I want this bubble here to have four bubbles around it. And you'll see why uh, when I add the next one. So what I'll do is I'll make another small bubble here. Just about that size. And this one, we're actually going to take this bubble and we're going to shove it between here. So to do that, what we do is we actually take this and spread it apart just a little bit. And we push that bubble through just like that. So we end up with this and we are almost done with the top part and bring it down and make one more small bubble there. Now this cat is going to have a very small body because probably inflated it just a little bit too much even though we still left a little bit of room. So what we're going to do is just some basic simple little loop legs like this and this last one is going to be very tight. So. Let's take that. I hope it doesn't pop on us. There we got it. So, I end up with a little, little squatty little cat with a little tail. What I do is, the top bubbles here sometimes don't always come out to be the same size. So when I look at this, I can see these two are the same size, these two are the same size. So I'll take and just kind of rearrange it. So that I have two the same size facing the front. Doesn't really matter which two, the small ones or the big ones. And then what I will do is I'll take that darker purple. This one, we don't have to blow it up quite as much. I left, you know, less than half of it, or just about half, or a little more uninflated. So with this, what I'll do is I'll take this knot and I'm going to wrap it right into the, the middle here, just anywhere. Basically, you just want to tie that in so it doesn't come out. Okay, and then what we'll do is we're gonna make the ears. So I make this ear, eyeball it, you know, three or four fingers taller than where the ear, the eyes are. These are gonna be the eyes. Twist it here. So we end up with a loop, a uh, uh, twist about that size. This next twist, I make about half or a little less than what this one is here. So just about like that. So we end up with two like this. This one, you just want it to be smaller than this one because it's going to give the, this ear the shape once we pull it through. So next, what we'll do is we're going to take this little loopy piece here and we're actually going to pull it between these eyes. So we stick it in there, just kind of pull it through, end up with it like that. So you can see there's one half. So this next bubble here, we're going to make it about the same size as this one. And then the next ear on the other side, we'll just try to just try to eyeball it and get that same size there, right about there. And we're just going to take that and we twist it right into around the head where everything else is at there. This piece here, keep getting off screen guys, sorry. This piece here, just twist it and break it off, we don't need it. And then it's, rather than tie it, I just take that and just wrap it around a few times, pull it tight, it'll stick. And so then you have cat that's a little more fancy than the others that we had. I don't like this one.
draw the face on there. I end up with a little guy like that. Sometimes if you want to add detail, I have these. It's a little edding, it's called an edding paint pen. So we use that. We'll just put a couple little accent dots there. So then it just kind of gives a cat a little more detail there. So. All right, so those those are the first two balloon animals that I ever really learned how to make. Um, obviously, I didn't learn how to make all three variations at once. But um, as you as you go on, the more you the more you do it, you realize you can add little things here and there to just kind of upscale it so it doesn't look like a basic balloon dog or a basic cat. Um, the next one we'll do is a turtle. So a turtle is one of the ones that I, that, um, that's, I guess let me restart by saying I learned how to make 10 simple balloon animals. <laughs> Sorry, lost my train of thought there. <laughs> so 10 simple balloon animals and a turtle was one of those. But I also found a turtle to be a fan favorite. Um, and it is one of my favorites as well. So we'll go through a couple of different variations of that. Um, this one I'm going to, we'll show you the simple ones. And then I actually have a few other balloons that are that are a little more fancy, and we'll show you a different technique to make one that's that's simple enough, but it still has a, a good impact because of the type of balloons that we use. It's really neat to make. You're talking about a turtle. Yes. So for this one, we'll use one two sixty here, and then for the shell, um, I think what I'll do is first off, we'll start off by using. A 260 for the shell. So we'll use the same size balloons. The next one I make, I will use a larger balloon to give you an idea of how you can, again, how you can scale it up, make it look cool, but at the same time, it um, still isn't very difficult to make. So, start by, same thing, about half the balloon. So, well, I hope I hope one day, uh, Mackenzie, that we can get back to B Dubs once this is all done. So, so one of the one of the things about sitting at home, for those of you who don't know, is we do um, family nights at various restaurants. Um, one of them is Little Caesars in Corona. We've been doing that restaurant for nine years. Um, every Friday night, we're there six thirty to eight thirty. Um, but yeah, we haven't been able to do that, so it's been weird sitting home on Friday nights with nothing to do. Um, and then we're out at Buffalo Wild Wings and Midland um, once a month for kids' night out there. So we hope once this is back, uh, all done and over with that, we'll be able to go back to some of those restaurants. Um, there's been a few oddballs here and there that we've done in the past as well. But um, it's one of the things we like doing, you know. And I like doing the restaurants especially because they usually go with both of us, myself and my wife. So, um, you know, it's amazing we're not sick of each other. We work together so much, but it's a lot of fun to do. So, All right. Back to our turtle. So the turtle, there's a couple different ways we can do it. We can leave the face simple, just like we do a dog, cat, anything like that. Just like that. Um, I used to, but of course, I've just, I've kind of changed it to some of the things that I've learned throughout. So what I'll do is, uh, we'll, well, you know, we'll, we'll start with the simple one, because that's, that's how we're doing this. And then we'll kind of build up from there. So we have just a simple turtle like this, little face. Then what we'll do is we'll actually just make a couple of loops about the same size. And again, if you, you know, I, I use my hand to measure stuff. I've kind of gotten used to sizes, how big I want stuff. But if I'm, you know, if I'm telling people about, you know, the what size that, that stuff is and how I know it's all the same size, it's roughly three fingers. So if you were to take three fingers and loop it over, you'd have a loop about that size. And so this starts off, as you can see, like the simple dog. We have the turtle face and then one loop. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to make another loop this size to go on the other side. So then we end up with this. Now, if this balloon was inflated all the way, you would actually be able to just, if this was inflated all the way here, make your handle just a little bit bigger. And that's actually how you make a simple sword, just like that. So when people ask, how did you learn how to make things out of balloons? You know, it's easy to tell them that 
kind of like Legos, I tell people. Once you know, understand the basic building blocks of things, you can understand how you add on to it just to make it more complex. So we'll take this turtle slash sword shape. We're going to make the body. The body I'll make just a little bit bigger than my hand. Sometimes I'll spread my fingers out just a little bit. Twist it there. And at the end here, we're actually just going to make two more twists just like this. A loop twist like that. And a loop twist like this. Turtles don't have tails, but we're going to leave that on there for the time being. Next, we'll take our brown balloon or mocha. Tie that off. What I'll do is I will take this, and we're going to take this knot, kind of like we did the cat where we just tied the knot in. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to tie it right in there. I guess I shouldn't say tie it more so as we just kind of pull it through. We just loop it around a couple different times, kind of like a figure eight. And so then it just locks it in there so you can see it. Then, hi <laughs> <laughs> <I> Brandy. <laughs> <clears throat> so we take that turtle <laughs> and we, we will make this brown balloon about the same size actually no just a little bit bigger than the green one at the bottom that's going to be the top of the shell I'm going to turn around this way for you so you can see this next one when I bring it back to the head we're going to make a small bubble here and wrap it into the head right here. This bubble here though, I'll typically make just a little bit smaller than this top one here. So if you want to twist it first, that's fine. You can see it's just a little bit smaller. The reason why I do that is because once you twist it in, what we'll do is we're going to bring it back around this side and do the same thing. But once you twist both of those in, you'll see it actually gives the turtle a little more of a shell shape versus just having three three balloons going across on the top and the bottom gives it kind of a hump in the middle gives it that shape um, so we have these extra pieces here and obviously turtles don't have extra pieces well unless they're swimming in Saginaw River but um, take this and just kind of snap the green one off twist it around like that same thing with this one here Now, depending on how much you've twisted this around, if you're, if you're unsure of it, sometimes you can just take and just put a loop, put a, a knot in the end there, which is what I've done before. Um, all depends on how quick I'm moving. Sometimes I'll tie it, sometimes I won't. Um, but I have had them come undone and it deflates a little bit on me. So, uh, But yeah, so that is your basic turtle that you see. It's just got a little head like that. All right, so we'll do uh, one more turtle that style. That's that, I guess that's more of a sea turtle style, but um, you know, kid asks for if somebody asks for a turtle, I'll typically oh, just go. make a turtle. You know that that kind there, and you know if they spe specifically ask for a sea turtle, then I will add some things to it, like I'm going to do right now. Um, and again, it's one of those things where it's time. You know how much time I have versus. How many kids there are at the event that we're at or whatever so this one takes close to the same amount of time it is a little more detailed and, um, but with a little bit of practice it, they both take about the same amount of time really so um, again okay so again I start with that same size balloon we've been using um, for the shell on this one I am going to use a 350 you can see the difference in size there quite a bit larger and we're going to use that one for the shell um, okay so for the face what we'll do is we're going to do three bubbles the first bubble is going to be yeah, about two fingers or so the second one will be right about the same the third bubble we're actually going to make just a little bit bigger so three fingers maybe four um, I guess a good point of reference sometimes if you just pull this down this knot 
<clears throat> we can just tie this knot right in there. And if you have a good imagination, you can kind of already see a little bit how that turtle's head looks there, but maybe you can't. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, so I mentioned that by adding a little bit of detail, you can change up how the turtle looks. So what we're going to do here, reach for my old turtle there. We had just the legs like this. Hello, Amelia, how are you? So we have, um, I guess the difference is kind of like the way when we did the first two dogs, the loop legs versus putting the little split in the middle of the legs. We're going to do that here, only we're going to make one leg and we're going to make them the two parts of the leg two different sizes. So the first one, um, you'll see what I mean in just a second here. Um, the first one we're going to make, um, we want to make sure we get, we have enough balloon. It looks like we do, but this is going to be a lot of twists. So we may run a little bit short, but we're going to make the first bubble about four fingers. So we end up with something about uh, that size. Uh, maybe it's closer to three fingers, I guess. The next one, we want to make sure that it is bigger. So you can see right here is where that one would normally twist in if we did it just like our dog legs. But instead, what I want to do is I want to add the width of about another bubble. So if you can see the head, this bubble here, I'm going to go down to where that is. And we're going to twist it off there. Like so. And the reason why we want these different sizes is because we want this to look more like a fin, like a sea turtle. So we'll take that one and we'll twist it this way. All right, now before I show you the final result, I'm going to go ahead and make the other one. And so you end up with something that looks like this. And then you can see here when you have one bubble, it's a little bit different. A little bit bigger than what this one was. You can see how it kind of comes out more. Um, and it just happens sometimes with the balloons, especially if I'm going fast and not really paying attention. Um, yeah, so what we'll do now is we'll make the body. Like that. Just twist off one small piece. And then we're actually going to just repeat what we did up here on the legs for the back two. Okay. Sometimes your back ones might not have enough balloon left. In this case, I didn't inflate it enough because I have enough, I have a lot of balloon left. So kind of like an actual sea turtle, my back legs are actually gonna be a little bit smaller than the front ones. This extra piece you can leave there, you can tie it off, or as I mentioned before, my little balloon cutter just cuts it like that. And we get rid of the extra piece. So then we end up with a little shape like this. There is our turtle. See the back legs kind of kick out just a little bit. Um, our big balloon, our 350, tend to mouth inflate quite a bit, mouth inflate quite a bit. So I like to, the, the bigger ones, I don't need a pump for, um, but I'm trying to break that myself out of that habit. So I will use this pump here. Blow it up just a little bit because we don't need that much of this balloon hardly at all. So. What we're going to do with this is we're actually going to make the shell the same way we did the other turtle. We're just going to use the bigger balloon to give it a slightly different look. So tie that around. This one, will, again, we make it just a little bit longer than this bottom one. So it gives it kind of that hump shape. Like that. And then for the sides, we're just going to make the bubbles slightly smaller than this one here. Once we're done, once we are done making our shell, this piece here, again, we, I just kind of twist it off, just pop it off like that. Then we can just tie it once, that's fine. So then you end up with this more of a sea turtle's look to that guy there. He's got a bigger shell. What's up, Dad? I want to see a penguin. Right? And there's his little face. Okay. Now, one thing you can do, I I will show you on this one. There's actually even more you can do with this one. As I take one white balloon, tie off two small bubbles like this. This is, I guess I wasn't going to do this, but I like adding eyes to the turtle so he has his own little eyes. 
And we make two of those little ear loop twists real tight and close together, like this. Then we break this off here. And what we do with the, that little white piece there, we actually just take that, shove it in here. And then so we give our little turtle eyes. Okay, I have one more turtle I'm gonna make. And then people like seeing the penguin. So we we're, we we're gonna make our next turtle and then I'll go ahead and I'll show you um, how I make my penguin. All right, so the, la the last turtle, um, as I mentioned, is it's a little bit different. It uses different balloons. Um, and using these balloons, you can come up with a really neat little guy um, takes a little bit longer than the other one, so this is not one that I typically will do if I'm at large public events. This is more of my uh, one I'll do for like at parties and things like that where there's not as many people because it does take just a little bit longer. The other turtles, I can do those in you know about a minute, minute and a half. This one takes about two to three minutes to make at normal speed when I'm not showing people. So it will take just a little bit longer. Um, getting, kind of getting my stuff ready here because it takes see five five or six different balloons and let's see one two three four five okay so what we'll use is I'm gonna use this is a 160 so just gonna give you guys an idea this is a regular twisting balloon this is a 160 it's a size smaller so it's a very thin one I will use something called a quick link and these are neat balloons because unlike your regular round balloons like this here this one has an extra little tail at the end. The next one I'll use is I'm going to use a heart balloon shaped like that. And then we're going to use two blossom balloons like this. Kind of looks like a flower shape when it's inflated. So these are fun to use uh, because anytime you pull one of these out, kids are just perplexed because it has a hole in it. And how do you use a balloon with a hole in it, right? To get started, I'm going to inflate these. Now, the, the way to inflate these is just kind of, you got to have to hold it at the bottom here. And it's hard to tell if you've never used these before what's fully inflated. But we're only going to inflate it about halfway because it does have one, two, three, four, five chambers on it. But we only want four of them inflated. So I inflate it so that's almost inflated all the way and then I deflate it just a little bit so that it looks more, more like a square. If you can imagine that, a square of balloons. And then when you tie this, when I tie this knot off, I tie it very close to the end. And you'll see why in just a few moments. And that one I didn't hold right. When you don't hold this right to inflate it, you can see you end up with this big bulb at the bottom. So that one I did not. But you can still work with that. Okay. So we have them both about the same size here. And again, when we tie this off, we want to tie this close to the end as possible. One way I do that is I tie my knot, but I don't tie it real tight. And then I pull the knot and I just pull it toward the end. So it gets it toward the end. Then kind of squeeze it a little bit just to soften it up. Okay. The next step we're going to do is tricky. It's been a little bit since I've done this, so I might pop this balloon and we'll find out. Hopefully I won't, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to split this balloon right in the middle and we're going to fold it in half. And we end up with something like that. So. As I'm doing this, I realized that this is a design that I actually um, actually paid to learn. So as a quick disclaimer, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Matt Falloon. He's out of Australia. This is actually his design. So. Very good balloon artist, but all credit goes to him with this one. I learned from him. So we have two balloons that look like this. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take them and put them together now. To do that, just kind of squeeze them together. And you just take two of these, 
twist it around like so. Then what you would notice when I had done those is that you had two parts of this balloon. There was a big one and a little one. We just want to make sure that all the big ones and all the little ones are on the same sides because then it gives it that shape. So the next one we're going to inflate is going to be the heart. This heart balloon. If we inflate it all the way, you can see it actually does look like a heart. But we're not going to use it that way, so we let a little bit of air out. So I keep it nice and soft. It's only inflated about halfway. Tie this one off at the end. Now before I use that, what I will do is I will grab my quick link, this one here, and I'm going to inflate that, oh, with about maybe four or five pumps with this pump. So we have one, two, three, four, that's good. You can tie this one off separately and then tie it to the other one. But when I am working with balloons that I want tied together, typically, I'll just tie them together because we want to tie these two together here. So what we'll do, I wrap it around once or twice, just take it, tie it together just like that. We are going to use this knot here and this knot here to attach it to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this end, this little wiggly end here, and I'm going to tie it right into the middle here by just pulling it <laughs> through the side here. So I just take it, pull it, and then kind of like we did with uh, the ends of the balloons on the the turtle and the cat and stuff. We just take it and just wrap it around a couple of times so it doesn't come undone. So you kind of end up with something that looks like this. I know, not exactly a turtle. But what we're actually going to do is this balloon, we're going to move out to the end here. And that green nozzle that I mentioned, this one, we're going to take that and we're going to do that to the same in the middle. Just kind of pull it through, wrap it around a couple of times to make sure it doesn't come undone. Mm -hmm. So, before I show you what we're going to do with the heart, I'm going to take this little balloon and we're going to inflate that just a little bit, about halfway. What I'll do here on the end is I'm going to twist off one little bubble and then we're going to do one of those pinch twists. But since we only have one bubble, what we do is take that knot and we hold it like this and we pinch it and twist it that way. And we end up with the pinch twist on the end. Just gonna stand up for this one so I can see. This one I just take and I pass it underneath the turtle and I have this pinch twist here kind of lined up almost at the back there. Take that balloon and we just twist this balloon around the back end. This piece now this one, because it has that pinch twist there, sometimes they won't stay by themselves. So I take and I will tie this off. Okay? Now the heart, you could leave the heart like that. As you can tell, it's just a heart balloon that I twisted in like that. But what I will do is you take this top bubble and just kind of press it down. You just kind of squeeze it. And what you find is that it manipulates the head and gives it more of a shape that way. And then you can obviously add your eyes, put a mouth on them, all sorts of different colors. The wife is begging me to let her do the artwork, so I'll let her do the artwork. And then I will show you the end result after she does that. But again, it's a design that takes a little bit longer using these fancier balloons, but it is one that doesn't press. You can use white and make a cow out of uh, this style balloon. You can make a sheep out of this style balloon um, and really all sorts of different creatures um, using that same style there. So the opportunities are endless. So, all right. We've done a couple of them already. We've done dogs, cats, turtles now. Um, I will do the penguin next. And the penguin I don't have too many variations of. Um, but I do have a really good story that goes along with the penguin. Oh, Lord. So I won't go into the whole story because it's more entertaining when I have kids in front of me. But 
Um, the gist of it is that the penguin is the first multi-balloon animal I learned how to make. So it's one that I, that I will always do. If, if it means taking a little bit more time at an event because someone asked for a penguin and I don't have it on my board, um, I will still do it because I love the penguin. It's near and dear to my heart. So. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who is uh, tuned in live and is watching this and following along, or not necessarily following along, but have been watching the entire time. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm, no, I'm probably going just as stir crazy as everybody out there. Um, living, you know, I'm not one to sit at home too much and, and uh, just kind of sit around. And that's almost what we're forced to do right now, you know? So being able to do this, it really helps me uh, with my creative outlet. Um, and to be able to just show you guys some of the stuff that I, that I do and have been doing for many years. Um, going forward, I'll try to do this, you know, maybe not every day, but every couple of days. And if you guys have suggestions of things you'd like to see me make, um, even if it's a little more complicated, let me know. Uh, maybe I can do, you know, a session at some point where I make one thing that's kind of complicated. Um, maybe it's something I haven't done before. Um, I've seen other artists do that, and it's, it's just a lot of fun to get creative and be able to show you guys the creative thought process of trying to come up with how you make a certain shape out of a balloon if it's something that I've never done before. So, Okay, with that being said, we'll move on to the penguin. For the penguin, we use three balloons, black, white, and orange. I will inflate... We, go, we inflate them probably about the same amount as we did the most everything else that we've done. Um, a little more than halfway. About like that. So, and by the way, if you hear that little squeak after, uh, before I tie it, that's what's known as burping. So rather than just tie it and keep it tight right here, we kind of let a little bit of air out. And that gives us a little more stretchiness to tie the balloon. And the last one, we don't even need quite that much. Now, I've gotten to the point that when I do this, typically what I will do is I will take all three balloons and I tie all three balloons together. And then I start making it from there and just, it's done. Magic. Boom. Um, but today I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> We want to show you guys a little more step by step how we do it. So, we start with the white balloon. To start with the white balloon, I, I noticed that. Me too. To start with the white balloon, we take, and I will make a loop twist uh, about three to four fingers. This one, we're going to make it just a little bit bigger. Four fingers. Notice I still have the knot in my hand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to pass it between here once or twice. What that does is that will lock that in place. Um, a lot of times when you start with an ear loop twist like that, if you don't lock it in place, it'll just come undone and poof, it's undone. This way it allows me to let go of it and basically just talk to you or interact with kids or whoever's around. For the next step, what we'll do is we'll make two more ear, uh, ear loop twists, but we're going to make them slightly smaller than this one. So you can see it's about that size. It is slightly smaller. And we want to make two of those, same size. Kristen wants to see you do a lamb from the jeans. Or sheep. A lamb, let me see. Sheep. Yep. I might be able to come up with one. I don't have any white quick links to do the sheep, um, but we might be able to come up with something. Make a black sheep. Like you. Could do a black sheep if I have some black geos, or we can come up with some fun shapes, something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, if anybody who's ever been around while I'm balloon twisting, if my wife isn't working, she does nothing but give me a hard time. So today's no different. She sits on the other side of the table behind the camera, of course, and... Uh, just gives me crap all the time, so. <laughs> what I'm here for. So when doing that, I noticed that my ear, that my little twists here are different sizes, which is okay. You know, if, you know, if kids ever say, you know, look at something, say it's different sizes, it's art. It's not always going to be 100% exact, but we still like it to be like that anyways. Um, 
Similar to the way we started with the turtle, you'll notice this makes a neat little sword too. It's just another one of those variations on shape. You can have a handle on it like that for a younger kid or whatever. But we're not making a sword, we're making a penguin. So we have a shape that looks like this, or cross even. Next, we will take our black balloon. Our black balloon, we're going to take this knot, just like we did on the others, and we're going to tie it right into the middle of that. And we want to wrap it around a few times, because we want to make sure that's in there nice and snug. Okay? We have that. The next step we're going to do is we're going to make an ear loop twist about the same size, if not a little bit bigger than this. And the reason why is because what we're going to do is we're actually going to loop that right over that white. Okay? And the reason why I say about the same size or bigger is, you know, someone might look at that and be like, well, obviously it's going to be a bigger size. Not necessarily. If you don't want to loop that over right away like this, you can make that the same size, just like this. And I'll show you what we'll do is we'll twist that through the middle. All that is going to do, quite frankly, is just going to make your white stick out just a little bit farther. And make your penguin's face just a little bit chubbier. That's all. So you can do it however you want. Next, we'll make what's going to be the start of the penguin's body. If you want a long penguin or a tall penguin, you can twist it down here. But the important thing to remember is this black balloon... We are going to use that three times. So we're going to twist it once here, come back up, and come back down. So you want to make sure you have enough balloon left to get three. Um, what I'll typically do is I don't really I don't really measure this ever. I just kind of eyeball it. So sometimes I'll make a penguin that's this big. Sometimes he's this big. They they definitely penguins are the ones that usually come out different all the time. So we did that. We twist it here at the bottom. Then we're going to take this. As I mentioned, we want to go, we want to go down, up, down. We're going to take this black balloon and twist it right in here. So a couple of different ways to do this. I know I didn't really mention this earlier. Um, I just, you know, I referenced twisting it in there, but I didn't really tell you guys how. So a couple of different ways is you can just kind of pull it through like that, and the pressure will put a, will put a twist in it automatically. The other way is if you're measuring it about the same size. Twist it just like we do when we're starting any any other you know basic animal. We put a twist there. What that allows you to do is that actually allows you to pull it through just a little bit easier, and it takes a little bit of tension. Off. So I probably should have told you that a little bit earlier, but hey, cut me some slack. I'm new at this, all right. So, and then the last one we'll bring back down here, and we're gonna twist it right in here. So we end up with that. And before I do anything with these bottom pieces here and twist them off or break them or anything, we're going to add the orange. And to do that, we're going to put orange on the beak up here, and then we're going to use orange at the legs. Um, and the way I do it is I do it in such a way that I don't have to do the beak, break it off, tie it, and then do the legs. I'll do it all in one shot. So to do that, two different ways you can do this. You can either take your orange, twist it in here like we normally would to start, or what might be a little easier is you take it, we'll make the beak first, twist a small bubble, slightly larger bubble, twist this around just like we would like this, like we would on the others, and then we're gonna to wanna to lock that in place so it doesn't come undone. <clears throat> By doing that, just like we did on the ear loop twist here when we first got started, we take that knot and we pass it through a couple of times. And just like before, what that allows is us to let go of that and it will not come undone. So we'll, next we'll want to just kind of squeeze that just a little bit so that's a little bit soft because we're actually going to put a little bit of tension on that. We're going to take this, this uh, junction here and we're going to tie it right in here. So we just kind of pull it through like that. And as I mentioned before, we are going to use... <laughs> We're going to use this for the feet as well, but I don't want to have to break this off and tie it and then add the feet because it adds an extra step. So what I will do is I will take this orange and you just want to, if you roll it, almost like you're twisting it, roll it around a couple of times, that tension will lock that in place so you don't have to tie it. Then what you can do is you can come back down here 
twist this orange around the rest of them. So then you have something that I commonly refer to as a mess. It looks like that. For the feet, we're going to do uh, ear loop twists. You can make them small little feet if you want, or you can make them like big clumsy clown feet, whatever you like. In this case, I'll make them bigger. So he's got some big feet just like that. We have all these extra pieces left now. All that's left to do is break the extra pieces we don't need. Um, you can either twist them around, wrap them around, or tie them, whichever you prefer. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually just twist them all around. So take off the white one, take that, and just take it. What I'll do is I'll typically do like a figure eight. So I'll go around this foot, go around the back foot, come back around that black one. More or less, just don't go in the same direction all the time. Just twist it around different things. Even though we're breaking this black one off, it's still helpful to be able to twist that through. You can even just pass it through here once if you wanted, like so. Orange one. Same thing, we're just going to wrap that around a little bit, pass it through. And then we end up with our little penguin who's not quite done yet because his face is a little bit twisted. So, first thing I will do to correct his face, this orange balloon. Um, when I'm inter interacting with kids, I ask them how, you know, if that's supposed to be there. No, it's not supposed to be there. Well, what do we do with it? We snap our fingers, right? So you snap your fingers and it pops, but it didn't pop yet, so we snap our fingers again. Still didn't pop. So next thing we do is we take and we just snap our fingers like that, and it pops, and our penguin stays together. <laughs> Still looks kind of funky, I know. But we just take this orange, just kind of straighten that out right there to space. Just like that. And then we have our little pattern. Just like that. So like I said, that's a, that's a fun one. I went through some of the different things I talk about when I do the pen, when it's snapping the fingers and, and whatnot, but um, it's really fun to just interact with the kids when they're in front of you, especially. And when you pop that, what I do when we're in Little Caesars, and I tell everybody in front of me, I say, okay, now is everybody ready to have their entire restaurant turn around and stare at me? Snap my fingers and pop it, and of course, without a doubt, every time, everybody turns around and stares at me because it's really loud. So it's a lot of fun. So that's our penguin. Just to kind of give you a quick update on the uh, artwork. As I mentioned, I have the artistic ability of a six-year-old, um, and so my wife, if she is standing around, and she has the ability to do some artwork for me. She'll take advantage of it. And this is what you end up when she does the fancy artwork. He's so cute. So. I could do it too. I just don't want to show her. Ha ha. So. <laughs> you thought. All right, guys. We're going to do one last one here. And this is another fun one that gets attention. People like it. Um, the kids especially like it. And that is a monkey in a tree. So we'll do two different variations of the tree. The monkey is the same on both of them, but we'll do um, two different variations on it. Now the monkey can be something that's more complicated. Uh, for the monkey and the tree one, I typically don't make it more complicated. I just do a very simple monkey because combined with the tree, it has a good enough ball effect. So this is one, we don't have to do too many twists. So I will blow it up just a little bit more on this. Kind of give it a squeeze and a stretch. For this, we will start. Man, it's been a long time since I made this monkey. <laughs> I was gonna say your kids haven't been in love with that since like 2011. Oh gosh. So yeah, even um, <clears throat> sometimes if there's things that are simple that I haven't made in a while, it takes me a minute to think about how to do it. So <laughs> this is one of those cases. Um, so what we do is we'll take twist off a small bubble. We will twist off a bubble that's slightly larger like this and what we're going to do here is we're actually going to make a pinch twist but it's going to be with a little larger bubble so we're going to bend that like that take this kind of pinch that squeeze it together so we end up with a bigger ear like that then what we'll do is we'll take another bubble make it about the same size as this one this is going to be the face Hold that bubble, we'll make 
another bubble about that size, same as this one over here. This is probably about a two finger, three finger bubble. And we're going to make one more pinch twist. Okay, so you end up with something that looks like this. And then the last thing we're going to do is we are actually going to take this bubble and twist it over here. So essentially what we'll end up with is we'll end up with another pinch twist right in the middle. So we end up with this little guy like that. Could also be used as a mouse if you made it with smaller legs. I will usually do a neck about that size, a little bit bigger than the head. Um, it can really be any size you want though. And when I do my monkey, the front legs are typically what will go around the tree. So I make the front legs just a little bit bigger. You see, it's almost like a six finger bubble there. Or ear twist rather, I'm sorry. Like so. Make the body, you know, about that size. It's about another three finger bubble. And then the back legs, make it just a little bit smaller. Like so. So you end up with a monkey like this. And then just to add some character, this back end, what I'll do is I'll take it and you just kind of twist it up a little bit. And it will hold its shape if you hold it for a minute. Just kind of take it, twist it. Kind of gives it a neat little curl to look more like a monkey. So that's our monkey. And I'll show you what that looks like on both of the trees. So the first tree we'll make is going to use three balloons. They will both actually use three balloons, but... We're going to use one mocha and two lime green. So we'll blow up the mocha almost all the way. So I will usually put my finger on the end of it and hold about a fingertip length if you can see where that is. And that's almost all the way to me. That kind of broke it a little bit, let a little air out. So we have that blown up almost all the way. We're going to do the same thing with these green ones here. Almost all the way. Now, rather than just tie that off at the end there, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this and we're going to tie the ends together. So, wrap it around once or twice and then you can take and just tie that. So it ties it like a loop. If there's a kid standing in front of me, I will loop it right over his head say hang on to that for me. So and that they will do. Also gives them something to do, kind of interacts with them a little bit. So. Okay, to make the leaves of the tree, what we'll do is we're going to take this balloon here. I'll try to get back a little bit farther for you, show you what we're going to do. We hold this bubble here at the bottom, and then we pinch it here. We want to try to find the middle of that so it's the same length. Right where this, where your fingers meet here, we bring it together in the middle, and we kind of hold it, and then we twist it. And what you may want to do is pass it through once because that will lock it. And that will allow you to free your hands so you can do the second one. Otherwise, twist it. It has a, it can come untied. This one didn't, but it can. So it's just a little bit easier, less frustrating. And we take these two and we will twist them together right there in the middle. There's our leaves. Now we could just take this balloon Attaches here at the top, boom, we're done. Have a nice day, kid. But we're not going to do that. So what we do? What is wrong with you? Oh, my wife rolls her eyes. It's great. So this one, I kind of squeeze it just a little bit to get some of that air to the end. So we left it uninflated a little bit, but now what we want to do is we want to actually move the air all the way to the end because it makes this balloon very soft. We'll find roughly the middle by splitting it in half, hold it here at the bottom. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to twist this. So to twist it, simply hold it here at the bottom and pull one balloon over and just keep back and forth. Now this is something that it's very tough to do slow. So 
just kind of twist it so it's like that. At the top here, what I do is I simply just twist it off like so. So you end up with something like this. And you can see the different colors simply where there's more air, not so much air, or where I squeezed it more and twisted it and stretched it a little bit more. So you know, even though it's the same color balloon, it's all one balloon, it does look like it's two different colors. The top, this one, very tight. So a lot of times I'll just leave it, won't even mess with it. But you take this and you wrap it around like so, and you end up with that little piece right at the top there. So you end up with a funky little tree like this. Straighten out your leaves like so. Monkey just kind of slides up the tree. Ta-da, you have a monkey in a tree. So for the last one we'll do, same thing, a monkey in a tree. The monkey will be the same, so I'll just use that same monkey. But what I'm gonna do something a little bit different with the leaves, and at the same time, I'm gonna use a bigger balloon for the tree trunk itself. So same thing with the leaves, we're gonna tie them off, like we did when we first started the other. Find the middle, twist them. I stick my hand there and I just kind of roll it around, it helps me twist it. That and then people look at you crazy like you're twisting really fast and you're not really moving that fast, it just looks like it. Twist these together here. And then we grab our 350. Thought I pulled one out, maybe I did not. Grab my handy dandy little pump here. If you want to make a really tall tree, you can. Typically, I'll blow this up about half to three quarters of the way. Give it a little squeeze and a stretch. I guess we did blow it up almost all the way, so this will be a little bit bigger. This top part here, what I'll do is take a twist off the bubble. And then, as I mentioned before, if you don't hang on to it, it will just come undone. What we're going to do, because we're not going to do a pinch twist or anything fancy at the top here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are actually just going to take this and wrap it right around the top here. So you end up with your tree like this. But wait, there's more. Because I said I, wasn't, I was going to do something just a little bit different with the leaves. So what you can do with the leaves is take the bottom here and I come out oh I don't know about three quarters of the length and what we'll do is we'll take it and you can pinch it and just kind of twist one of the bottom pieces or not one of them but twist the bottom piece while you're holding this top one here just quite simply go around do that with all of them And then rather than have just your simple leaves like this, <clears throat> you have a bottle of smoky. Take that, and pull it through. You have your monkey on a tree there. Slightly fancier tree. Turn them like that. Um, and just another variation. Sometimes I'll take a yellow balloon. Twist a couple of small bananas and put it at the top here so it looks like the monkey's crawling to something. But just lots of different ways to do the same thing, um, but add variety and add a variation. Uh, people like to see balloon artists make things with the larger balloons uh, because a lot of people, if they've never seen a balloon artist, they don't really know that balloons come in that many different sizes. One of the other sizes that we have, I showed you three of them so far, but I'll show you the last one. We won't use it today. But the last one, it's called a 646. It's that size. So that's a huge balloon. Maybe we can make something with that next time. But for now, those are the, the five balloons, um, five simple balloon animals that I make. Um, I guess six if you include the monkey and then the tree. There's a couple different ones there. And then a few different variations on every one. So um, yeah, I think that's all I have. 
you know, thank you guys for watching. If you have suggestions on other things you'd like to see me demonstrate, um, whether it be a balloon animal or, uh, you know, a larger balloon sculpture or even some little decoration piece, kind of like I did with the flowers outside um, a couple of days ago, just let us know. Um, after all, it <clears throat> looks like we're going to have nothing but time on our hands for the next couple of weeks. So uh, need something to keep me busy and keep me in practice. So thank you all very much for all of your support. Um, we appreciate it very, very much. And we hope that once we get back into some of our restaurants after this, that you'll come and see us. Um, but most, I, uh, yeah. So I guess <laughs> last thing really is just, you know, God bless. Everybody take care of yourself. Stay safe. Stay, uh, stay kind. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.